We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. What are you writing? It's for the Congress. It doesn't concern you. Whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it. To all approve the declaration as revised by this committee. Aye. We, therefore, the representatives of the United States of America, solemnly declare that these United Colonies are, and of right ought to be, free and independent. You're a slave. I ain't no slave. I'm a soldier. But when this war is over, I'm gonna be a free man. And you'll be back in chains. Ask your general about slaves. And then you tell me who's free and who's not. Pushed to their limits by an oppressive empire, a determined group of rebels unites under the cause of liberty. King George has declared us rebels. Their quest for freedom will unify a people, ignite a revolution, and forge a new system of government. In time, these brave men and women will come to be known as the American Patriots. The American Revolution, a war for independence and liberty from oppression. While some heroes become American legends, others who fight for the country's freedom will continue to struggle for their own. But behind every struggle stands a man, and behind every legend lies the truth. You ready? You all right? The story of the American Revolution is known by nearly every American child who's taken a history class. But there is another story that's been virtually ignored for more than two centuries. At least 5,000 Americans of African descent fight in the revolution. These forgotten heroes rise up against oppression and risk their lives in the name of freedom for their country and for themselves. Bless you for allowing me to join your camp, man. All we have is food and water, but it's yours. And in our African tradition, the oral tradition is the big one that we pass knowledge from person to person. Our stories are continued and carried over generation and generation in spoken word, 
in poetry, in music. That's how they're still remembered today. You been to war? Indeed. My pa's in the war. You must be a proud man, your pa. Out there fighting for the truth. Black people believe that everything would change. And in the American Revolution, there was going to be more freedom than ever. And remember, black folks are fighting with a guarantee of their personal freedom, that they can leave the household of the master or they can leave the plantation. Christmas addicts, sailing poor, even the fair Miss Phyllis Sweet. So many names and faces, just like you and me, out there fighting for our freedom, especially old Jack Sisson, a patriot like no other. Okay, I phone now, boy. Jack Sisson, a slave as the revolution begins, will become a hero by war's end. Even helping to win American independence at the pivotal battle of Yorktown. But little is known of Jack's early life, except that he's owned by a successful farmer, Thomas Sisson of Tiverton, Rhode Island. Well, Jeffrey says you've got big dreams. You think you're good enough to fight? Good enough for war? The world that Jack Sisson lived in was a world where he's enslaved, but his work activity would have looked more like an indentured servitude. But he's enslaved. Law says you could take my place in the militia if I allowed it. You think you'd be better off a free man, Jack? Mm. You'd like to leave my house? It's a good house, sir. I'd rather hang than have one of my Negroes loose with a gun in his hands in the name of liberty. Your place is here, Jack. With me. fugitives who run away and join the Continental Army or the militias. This is what George Ruffin refers to as leg bail. Leg bail is where you actually just run away to the army. It's not an agreement from your owner. And so there are many who run away and they join. Some would remain free, many wouldn't. Why are you itching for a fight? You read the same words that I read. All men are created equal. Ain't that worth fighting for? Even as Jack Sisson takes his independence into his own hands, he is still far from free. He needs something to run to. While some Africans are being allowed to join Patriot militias, not everyone agrees with arming slaves. That declaration is just words. They're not meant for us. How could you say that? You know, an African might naturally assume, yes, this is my revolution. Not as slaves, but as free men. Of course, one of the big questions comes up is, well, what does independence have to do with freedom? You know, they're not necessarily associated. What do you see there? The Boston Massacre. That's the reason we are fighting the British. No. Look again. These red coats, they're killing a bunch of white men, but that's not the whole story. The first man killed in the massacre was a black man. Crispus Attucks. Crispus Atticus. He sees it as his fight early on. In fact, African Americans may have been more enthusiastic about independence because they saw if you separate with those who believe that liberty is a natural right, then naturally they're going to be your allies in abolishing slavery.
So tell me again why that piece of paper is worth fighting for. I heard Major Barton's looking for men. Are you gonna volunteer? <laughs> Major Barton. I heard you were looking for volunteers. Shall we live as those British subjects do in Ireland, slaves to the crown? While the American colonies fight for their liberty from the British Empire, for African Americans, the revolution is a chance for something even more personal. So tell me again why that piece of paper is worth fighting for. The American Revolution is probably the first serious propaganda war. You know, liberty and freedom and justice for all. There's talk of economic enrichment. There are all these things going on. The black people hear it, freedom. Major Borden. I heard you were looking for volunteers. Did old Jack get into trouble? No, son. He volunteered, and Major Barton gave him a spot on a secret mission. If it comes to it, we don't want the British raising alarms. Nearly a year after the Declaration of Independence, George Washington has lost one of his most gifted military strategists, General Charles Lee, and he needs to find a way to get him back. You are the Continental Army. Charles Lee was second in command only to George Washington, but Lee was captured by the British. At that point, the Americans needed a major general of the same rank in order to free Lee from captivity. Let's go over my plan. There was always a gentleman agreement between warring combatants that you could exchange certain prisoners. General Prescott is a part of the British occupation of Newport, and Prescott is seen and embodying everything that is evil and wrong of the British occupation. So the goal was to capture him and use him as an exchange so General Lee could be brought back into the Continental Army. The man Washington trusts to raid the British and capture General Prescott is Major William Barton, Jack Sisson's new commander. Major Barton was a part of the Rhode Island uh, command structure, a Rhode Island native. Barton was a leader in his community. He was a well-known and well-established family. So men were at ease and comfortable with following him into combat and following his orders. Barton's plan, cross the Narragansett Bay, surprising General Prescott in the country farmhouse he's occupied five miles north of town. Far enough from the thousands of enemy troops in Newport that the raid has a chance of success. The daring mission to capture British General Richard Prescott is made even more dangerous because it requires a nighttime crossing of the heavily patrolled Narragansett Bay with Jack Sisson at the helm. Sisson is likely chosen because he's a highly skilled boatman. They muffled the oars, so they said, so they could slide right by the British men of war who were there in the bay. They came up on the shore and were able to maneuver around patrols. Come on, men. Fall in and close up. The raid is more of a commando mission. Uh, it's the middle of night under the cover of darkness. There could have been at any point in time sentries posted that would have immediately identified other sentries and everything would have been lost. Sure and steady, Mr. Sisson. Go 
In the American Revolution, some patriots have a more personal stake in the fight for freedom. Jack Sisson is a hero, patriot. He was a slave for sure, but he was always out there fighting for the truth. But we're all the same, all created equal. On a secret mission to capture British General Richard Prescott, Rhode Island militiaman Jack Sisson puts his desire for freedom into action. Who are you? What is going on here? I hope you've had a pleasant night's rest, General. Legend has it that Jack Sisson bashes in General Prescott's door using his head as a battering ram. But whether the story is true or not, Sisson is an integral part of the operation. The daring mission results in the successful exchange of the captured General Prescott for the American General Charles Lee, all without firing a single shot. Jack Sisson's crucial role in the Prescott Raid's success earns the admiration of George Washington, who still isn't certain about African-American soldiers. George Washington was born into the Virginia culture, and slavery is very, very much a part of Virginia culture. So the idea of uh, trusting African individuals with weapons and to fight for those causes, he felt that was inappropriate. Congratulations, Major Bott. A hard job. Well done. But the honor belongs to my men. Indeed. This is among the finest partisan exploits that have taken place in the course of the war on either side. It discovers the highest honor to those who undertook and effected it. It would take some time from George Washington to be introduced to new opportunities and new ideas about who Africans were and what they would or would not do. What begins to change George Washington's ideas about black soldiers? Well, one is those actual soldiers who fought in those early battles. Jack Sisson was brave. Just like the many brave black heroes that fought at Lexington and Bunker Hill like Prince Esterbrook. And he was a slave, but he fought in the very first battle of this war. Prince Esterbrook participated in some of the earliest battles in Massachusetts. And everyone was looking to come forward and defend their commonwealth, their town, their farm, and their own families. It was Peter Salem. He fought at Bunker Hill. He was a slave until his master gave him his freedom. Peter! Peter! How many rounds do you have left? Only three! Peter Salem ends up registering with the Massachusetts Minutemen and is credited with shooting and killing Major John Pitcairn. And Salem Poor. He joined the militia too. And at Bunker Hill, he fought so bravely that 14 white officers gave an official statement of his heroism to Massachusetts government. <laughs> 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 Salem Poor, another extremely brave man in the heat of fire. He absolutely stands as one of the great African heroes of the revolution right beside Jack Sisson.
Jack Sisson's story may not be as well known, but he is no less heroic. Having proven himself in the Prescott Raid, Sisson now joins 400 integrated soldiers, commanded by Colonel Christopher Green, at a crucial American post. The British have occupied Philadelphia, the birthplace of independence. To prevent British supply ships from reaching the city, George Washington builds two forts on the Delaware River, Fort Mifflin and Fort Mercer. All right, let's get a move on. The British are determined to reopen their supply line. Colonel Green must prepare his men for the inevitable attack that could come at any time. Christopher Green had first-hand interaction with African heritage people growing up recognizing the close proximity and the interdependence of Africans, so he was significantly well-respected by his men. The post I have in charge, I am determined to defend with the small number I have to the last extremity. Some problems, sis? It's, it's just that the men are saying we won't last the night. That Philadelphia has fallen. If that is so, then it is our God-given duty to raise her up. And raise her up, we will. These soldiers and African soldiers in general had something to live up to. They had something to prove. They would fight. That they were brave and courageous. That they would die for our cause and our independence. 1,200 Hessian mercenaries are bearing down on Fort Mercer. Yes! And outnumbered three to one, it's up to Jack Sisson and the men of the Rhode Island regiments to stop them. All right, boys. Get this cannon mounted. Philadelphia has fallen. Jack Sisson and just 400 men of the Rhode Island regiments must hold a vital post. All right, let's get a move on. Against 1,200 professional killers, German mercenaries called Hessians, led by Colonel Karl von Donop. Make preparations for a two-pronged attack. Many African-American soldiers believe their decision to fight alongside free patriots is a just one that will eventually lead to their own freedom. I can see out! Stand. But what many forget is that the enslaved population, particularly in the South, is given another option to achieve their freedom, taking up arms and fighting for the British. Early in the war, the British royal governor of Virginia, Lord Dunmore, offers emancipation to any slave who fights for the British. 500 slaves join his so-called Ethiopian regiment. Despite the British attempt to turn slaves against their masters, some Africans believe in the Patriot cause and fight for more than their personal freedom. All right, let's get a move on. At Fort Mercer, the 1st Rhode Island Regiment prepares for the overwhelming Hessian force, a battle that could be their last. Remarkably, the Continentals hold off the mercenary force, inflicting more than 300 casualties while suffering just 41 of their own. With this amazing success, 
Jack Sisson and the men of the Rhode Island Regiment have more than proven their mettle. There must have been maybe hundreds of Africans who served with the Germans. The story was out there from the very beginning, 1775. You come to the king's aid, you can be free. Right? The Germans are fighting for the king. Didn't know they were colored Germans. You're not German. You're a slave. I ain't no slave. I'm a soldier. But when this war is over, I'm going to be a free man. And you'll be back in chains. They may give you a gun, but you're still just a white man's boy. And you are just a slave of a slave. The British are using these Germans just as they are using you. And when General Washington wins this war, there ain't gonna be nowhere for you to go. General Washington, ask your general about slaves. And then you tell me who's free and who's not. Washington, like many other leading patriots, is a slave owner. As the Revolutionary War begins, more than 130 slaves serve at Washington's plantation, Mount Vernon, including his most trusted companion, Billy Lee. George Washington bought a guy named William Lee and his brother. The brother remained most of the time at the plantation, while William Lee himself spent well, most of his time with George, uh, especially during the war. It is a noble cause we are engaged in. It is the cause of virtue and mankind. Slavery is brutal, but we can't take out the fact that there are these human relationships. You have this intense loyalty that grows up between the served and the servant. Washington respects the abilities of Billy Lee to do what he's doing, but it is subordinate relationship. George Washington is torn between the liberty he fights for and the slave-owning establishment he was born into but he will soon be forced to choose because without more African-American soldiers, his war for independence could be lost. And Jack stayed with Colonel Green for most of his service, and his service was good. Though thousands of black patriots fight for freedom, that opportunity has only extended to free men and escaped slaves. But as the war drags on, the need for soldiers grows, and George Washington must enlist every man he can. All right, let's get a move on. Three years into the war, the Rhode Island State Assembly issues a decree allowing slaves to join the fight in exchange for their freedom. Despite his reservations, Washington supports the idea, but only behind closed doors. General Washington had to make a decision because he was down on men, he was down on resources. Rhode Island was at a critical juncture, a significant part of the British invasion force of America was lodged in Newport, and they were looking for every able-bodied. 88 slaves enlist in the regiment, meeting their first test at the Battle of Rhode Island, a desperate clash in the aftermath of the failed attempt with France to force the British from Newport. A large American land force would move south into Newport, and then a French fleet would arrive uh, in Newport and then basically contain the British and Hessian troops. But as the French fleet were arriving, there was a great gale and it damaged uh, significantly a number of the ships. The American army were outmatched and outnumbered, so they decided to retreat off of the island. Don't fire! 
The Rhode Island Regiment was asked to cover that retreat. Don't fire yet! Sisson, stay firm. Here they go! The first Rhode Island resident had to prove themselves to the white society that they could be brave soldiers, and they were. Starting with the Battle of Rhode Island, there was recognition from the members of Congress that these people were right uh, in letting blacks in. They're really proving Washington wrong. George Washington's true feelings toward African-American soldiers are unclear. But the valiant service of men like Peter Salem, Jack Sisson, and Salem Poor show Washington that black patriots are more than equal to the challenge of battle. Eventually, these unsung heroes inspire George Washington to allow all able men, no matter what their race, to serve in the Continental Army. The first Rhode Island success isn't celebrated by everyone. The regiment's commander, Christopher Green is murdered, likely by British loyalists, angry that black soldiers are fighting against them. But the soldiers of the first Rhode Island will get a chance to avenge their fallen leader. With the aid of the French, George Washington sees an opportunity to end the war. He moves south with his army, including the first Rhode Island, where he hopes to trap British General Charles Cornwallis at Yorktown and force him to surrender. Marching up one way, marching down another, hiding, running, nothing's changed. Everything has changed. When this is all over, we will be free men. The only way to be free is to run. They said there's 10,000 Redcoats waiting for us ahead. You run, and you'll never stop running. This fight ain't about land and taxes and liberty from England. It's about what's in here. What every man has is his. It's worth dying for. And it's what we'll pass down to our sons. Comte de Grasse will keep any reinforcements from reaching Cornwallis by sea. The goal is to remove the fortifications at Redoubt 9 and Redoubt 10. May I request the 1st Rhode Island Regiment be included in the assault? General Sullivan speaks very highly of their service and loyalty at Rhode Island. Request granted. Alexander Hamilton wanted a black division. Being a West Indian himself, he knew the value of those individuals. He knew what black people could do. Thanks to Hamilton's request, Washington now entrusts a crucial battle to soldiers he once prevented from joining his army. The present moment will decide American independence. Prepare for battle. After weeks of siege, the Battle of Yorktown comes down to a nighttime assault on two small British fortifications, known as Redoubts 9 and 10. French troops will attack number 9, while Alexander Hamilton leads the 1st Rhode Island and other American troops against number 10.
Jack Sisson and the Rhode Island Regiment, men who joined the revolution to fight for personal freedom, now hold the fate of American independence in their hands. The war for American independence comes down to an assault on a small fortification at Yorktown. The men on the front lines are Jack Sisson and the soldiers of the Rhode Island Regiment. less than 10 minutes to take the readout. And this, for all intents and purposes, is the end of the war. Wallace is trapped. All that stands between him and England is a massive ocean. The Rhode Island Regiment is a crucial part of the victory that secures American independence, just as African-American patriots play vital roles throughout the revolution. Here is a very famous watercolor from a Hessian artist that includes an image of an actual African Rhode Island participant. It very much characterizes the fact that Africans were not sidelined participants. They were actively involved in nearly every aspect of building this great country. By understanding the story of Jack Sisson, we have a better understanding of the story of America. By taking readout number 10, the Rhode Island Regiment allows Washington to launch a devastating artillery attack on the main British fortifications. Five days later, General Cornwallis surrenders. Where is Lord Cornwallis? He is under the weather, sir. General Lincoln here will accept the sword. You may tell Cornwallis I'm not feeling well myself. The reduction of the British army under the command of Lord Cornwallis is most happily effected. At an earlier period, than my most sanguine hopes had induced me to expect. The actions of these soldiers, of those who sacrifice, become an example for future generations. For an enslaved population, this is the inspiration. If it wasn't for Jack Sisson and the boys of the first Rhode Island, the British might have won. Then how come I never heard of Jack Sisson before? Well, some folks don't want to hear our stories. They don't want to believe them. But we have to keep telling them. So someday they'll listen. They'll have to listen. They'll have to believe. We don't know exactly what happens to Jack Sisson, but I think the most important thing, Jack Sisson had choice. And the value of freedom is when you have freedom of choice. And what Jack Sisson embodied was the beginning of a new opportunity of freedom and choice for America. And unfortunately, it was something that most other Africans would not receive until after the American Civil War, several generations later. The work is done, and done well. George Washington continues to own slaves for the rest of his life but there is evidence that he may have been more progressive than his peers. Thanks, perhaps, to his experience with African-American soldiers, like the Rhode Island Regiment. Upon his death, Washington will be the only one of the founding fathers to free his slaves. For Jack Sisson and his fellow African-American patriots, the revolution is as much a war for personal freedom as it is for their countries. Unfortunately, their hope for equality is deferred to future generations. Many of these heroes have simply been forgotten or vanished, like Jack Sisson. But their contributions to the founding of a free nation stand as true examples of the American character. The sacrifice they make in their fight for national and personal liberty is something we must never forget.
Thanks for watching. If you'd like to help us produce more compelling historical content like this, please like, comment below, and share this video with fellow history buffs. And of course, be sure to subscribe to help keep history happening.